What's up legends and welcome to another video as you can probably tell from the car behind me today we are going to be looking at this Audi R8 which is well it's quite something it's a very special R8 so I wanted to show you a little bit around the car and I'm going to eventually drive it huge thanks to my friend Via Montes his Instagram will be on the screen but that is how you spell it he has been absolutely lovely in uh, uh, and always so so kind in letting me try the cars out so huge thank you Via Montes right let's get into this Audi R8 what makes it different why does it look so badass what is the base of it so first of all it's an audi r8 second generation so there are two generations of r8 both of which have a facelift so total you have gen 1 gen 1.2 gen 2 gen 2.2 this is a gen 2 i'm not middle fingering you i'm just trying to explain if that made any sense gen 2 first non-facelift god i need to that was probably the crappiest way to explain that anywho not only is it a gen 2 it is a rws a rear wheel drive audi r8 so all audi r8s usually come with four wheel drive the classic audi quattro system this one they removed um the front wheel drive section of it and it is now purely rear wheel drive still got the 5.2 liter naturally aspirated v10 this one however has been fiddled with by the guys at apr who are well known for fiddling with audi r8s and they've actually managed to squeeze out 634 horsepower in a very German way. I was told not to say 635, 633, it's 634. Let's get that straight, okay? No more, no less. But that is a lot of power to come out of this car, especially straight to the rear wheels. So it obviously gets rid of a little bit of weight, removing the, the front axle like that, and um, a little bit more power. Becomes quite a beast. It's also got a lot of visual add-ons. Um, which are added by APR, but are actually Audi performance parts. So that means it's, it's a full body kit, as you can probably tell, but it is an original Audi body kit. So you can buy these parts for your R8 straight from Audi. So let me give you a walk around what this one's got. It's got every single option. All in gloss, a carbon fiber, which goes really well with the matte gray or silver uh, wrap, which this car has originally is white. Gloss carbon fiber, so on the splitter, canards as well now these are not only do they look really cool but also you can see with the shape the air basically comes around these pushing the front of the car down allowing the front end to have a lot more grip so there is a strong purpose to this in the same way as the front splitter we then got really much more punchy much more kind of aggressive side blades uh, carbon fiber as well now on the Gen 2 is completely different to my Audi R8, which is a Gen 1.2. The side blade on these is divided in two. Uh, this is finished in black, piano black finish on these. Now the back is where it becomes sort of really, really beefy with the add-ons. So you've got these 918 styled um, little winglets that's come out the side. Not too sure, to be completely honest with you, with the aerodynamic purpose of those, because the air can't come through here. Uh, I'm sure there is a reason. It looks awesome, which is, you know, a very big reason to get it as well. But I would be intrigued to know what the exact aerodynamic um, kind of effect of those is. The rims, by the way, are standard and uh, the, so are the red calipers. Now we then got a huge rear diffuser, which is really interesting in its shape. So double rear diffuser here, and it's also got um, an air outlet right there included in it. And obviously all these little slats um, which uh, which go by. Now you need to be a little bit careful because the parking sensors are a little bit removed behind this. So apparently it's quite easy to kind of bash this into something when you're parking. Although, I mean, if you're parking that close to something anyways, you've got some balls of steel. Uh, it's also got kind of like on the 600 LT, it has got uh, a heat shield on the diffuser for the heat coming out of the exhaust. Stock exhaust on this one, Valvetronic obviously, um, you can see right there, there's actually the valve system right there. Sounds pretty good when you put it in dynamic mode. It's got blacked out logos and this really intriguing wing. So this wing is a really, really particular shape. You've got the Audi Sport logos on it and it's got, so these kind of stands holding it up rather than just coming under and attaching here as they usually would on a wing of this type. They actually go around and are linked from the top. Uh, similar to what you see on like a Performante or something. And I'm sure there's a there's an aerodynamic reasoning to this as well in those holes. All finished in carbon fiber uh, with these side blades as well on the wing. Looks awesome. Honestly, that's my favorite part of this car. It's really, really, really nice. So we then got the V10, 
back here, which is linked to a double clutch gearbox, which actually swiftly brings me onto the interior. If I can find the key, which is somewhere in my pocket. All right, got it. Same key as you get on Lamborghinis, obviously them being from the same group. Unlock the car, door handle is under here. Boom, whack that open. It's quite nice that it's hidden so you don't see it because door handles aren't very pretty. We've got gloss white paint, which is the original paint color. And the interior is, um, yeah, pretty clean, uh, subtle looking. Black leather, it's got uh, gray stitching which goes nicely with the exterior. It's probably one of the reasons why uh, they chose the gray. Uh, okay, let's shut this door so it's nice and quiet. And yeah, very, very nice. Now there's nothing bad you can say about this interior. This one's actually got the sportier seats, which are slightly less comfortable, but look cooler. There's nothing bad you can say about this interior, apart from the fact that it maybe lacks a little bit of character. It's so well displayed, everything's fantastic, but it doesn't kind of get you excited uh, necessarily when you're in here, but, the Amontis is looking at adding some carbon add-ons because that could spice things up a little bit. So down here, you can get this in carbon, some bits on the doors. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. It looks really nice. I'll show you a bit how the dashboard works and stuff. You do have this little plaque here, one of 999. So the rear wheel drive Audi R8 are limited to 999 worldwide which is kind of funky. Now, one thing that does strike when you get into this, no screen in the middle. If you put your foot on the brake, have the key in the car, keyless go, press the start button. Starts up, sounds really good. Now, everything is done through this screen right here. So this screen is basically your dashboard. So you can see currently, we've got it. So you've got the sat nav next to the rev counter, which goes all the way up to 9,000, which is pretty cool. And then you got some sort of German stuff going on here and your fuel range. But you can use these buttons here to flick through loads of different options. So this is, you know, Bluetooth, your phone, uh, your map. There's loads of different things you could do. You can tell on there we're in Monaco. So that is basically your dashboard. But not only that, you can also press on view. And then, for example, the speedo and rev, uh, rev counter also go in small down in the corners and the menu takes a priority, which is pretty nice to be able to have that option. So you no longer need a dashboard. It was one of the first cars to kind of do this. It's continued on like the Hurricane and other cars that kind of use this platform because this does have the same engine, same gearbox setup as a Hurricane. Now, speaking of gearbox down here, double clutch, you can change gears actually in manual mode through the gear shifter down here or put it back into P with that button, or you can also do it with uh, the paddles, which is kind of funky. Uh, the aircon is all controlled here, heated seats, got all that jazz, but they're little screens, see, on these little knobs right here. Um, you can yeah, turn these around and little screens, I quite like that, that's a really nice touch. You get that on the TT as well. Uh, you can also control various things down here for your dashboard, sat nav, whatever it may be. There, electric handbrake, little storage cubby hole, and a little bit of space behind the seats. Very, very nice. The important button you have is also the drive select button. So you can press that down there and it shows you your different driving modes. So you have comfort, where the valves close, auto, which is pretty self-explanatory to be honest, dynamic, where everything kind of beefs up a bit, and individual, where you can set it up however you want it to be set up. So we're gonna leave it actually in dynamic. And let's go for a drive. Right, Audi R8, RWS, 634 horsepower. So steel brakes. Not carbon ceramic, but absolutely sufficient. Honestly, you'd be surprised. You'd have to kind of get out and check at first to check they're not carbon ceramic because they work pretty well, at least from what I can feel now. We're not bashing it as hard as we could be. Now, there's a lot of power. I'm not, I'm not even scratching the surface right now. But the thing that sticks with me the most is how relentless the power is through the gears. So on my R8, I'm so used to it, like bang power and then stop everything and change gear and then bang power again. Whereas this is power, 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 power. It doesn't stop, it's relentless. So that's, to be honest, the thing that's kind of shocked me the most. You, there is literally no change when you flick the paddle. There's just, it's just, you hear a change in the, in the the sound of the car, but you don't actually really feel anything, which is nuts. Um, now, the steering, low speed electric steering, not much feel, takes away a bit of the character of it. So you could add at low speed a bit of character, but um, as soon as you start accelerating, you got natural. 
actually has rated V10, which makes crazy pops and crackles and pops and bangs or whatever you want to call them. Gearbox that just sends you into space. Uh, and a really, really cool interior, actually. I feel like I'm in a spaceship. I've got the sat nav in front of me. Um, and overall, it's such a complete package in the same way as like a McLaren 720S is, for example. It's so competent, yet so usable, that it's so good that that is what makes it great, but also maybe doesn't make it quite as good as a car that has a bit more character. So, yeah, I don't know if that made too much sense, but almost how good this car is, is maybe its biggest uh, kind of fault. Which it sounds nuts to say, but if, you, if you've ever experienced it, you know what I mean. And you can overtake people, no problem. Like, it's nothing. Now, you can feel, actually, I mean, again, I'm not pushing it hard enough, but you can feel the, uh, the grip that it's got from all those Audi performance parts as well. Um, kind of pushing it to the ground it feels kind of glued and it feels like it's got quite a light front end which is presumably because you don't have anything pushing power towards the front end so what a sound though and it just sticks you into the seat and actually the seats are quite a talking point this car is basically the perfect daily supercar right looks awesome super comfortable I'm sure it's got a great sound system it's it's built to be the perfect daily supercar yet they've put seats in it that you can't adjust and uh, like you can't adjust the, the the back support of it so you're kind of locked in quite an upright position which is a bit odd i find because you can't really adjust it to how you want to have it which makes the seat after a while not too comfortable Whereas this is supposed to be a car that you cruise in, you're able to do that sort of thing. And so I don't quite get the logic behind that. Um, quite a cool Porsche in front of us, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's so, so complete. And the power in this one feels absolutely not. And the overall kind of spec of it, if you're going to get a Gen 2 Audi R8, this is the one I feel. Because if you go on the four-wheel drive route, it's got less character. Uh, so that's already a little, slightly reflected through this one. The character's missing a bit. But in the four-wheel drive ones, even more. And this one's also been modified. So it's it's kind of, for me at least, the ultimate R8. Because you've got the, the playfulness of having the rear-wheel drive. You've got the extra power. But yet you've got all of the usability of an R8. So it's an R8 which has been taken. And R8s are kind of divided in half of it's usable, half of it's crazy supercar. And the crazy supercar side have just been slightly enlarged on this one compared to other R8s. So I think that's a really, really cool um, cool aspect to this specific car. Now, probably notice that there's Win Me written in massive on the side of the car. So Via Montes, whose Instagram and website will be down below, are actually giving away this car. So this car is going to go away towards the later part of the year. But it's not the only car that's getting given away. There's also an Audi A1 Quattro, which is getting given away in a month. And effectively, it's completely different to other giveaways um, where usually, you know, you would just buy a ticket. Here you actually buy a cleaning product or a calendar. And so you get a product, which is a great product, um, whether it's you're into calendars, they're beautifully shot calendars. Um, or if you're into keeping your car super clean, top-notch uh, uh, products or towels to clean your car or to dry your car. All of that's top scale. So not only do you get that as you would probably have to buy anyways for your car to keep it clean. Whilst doing so, you're also entering a competition where you have the opportunity to potentially win either an R8 or an A1 or an, and plenty of other cars to come in the future. So really cool concept. So I thought I'd just whack the link down below and, and chat about it to you guys. So yeah, awesome stuff, awesome car. I mean, thank you to Via Montes for letting me drive the car. Um, always an absolute pleasure. Really cool to kind of compare the driving experience to this, to, to my R8. I mean, it's completely, completely different. Such a similar base, such a different driving experience. Uh, this is definitely more complete, but also definitely probably slightly less involving. Um, and I will admit a lot sexier from the outside, this one. This one 
nailed it spec wise so um yeah awesome stuff i hope you guys enjoyed this video i really enjoy making these slightly more back to basics bare bone videos where we just hop in a car and give you my first initial impressions and i just really enjoy sharing these moments with you guys so thank you so much for watching subscribe if you haven't already we'll have plenty more videos like this in the very near future please give your montes a follow check out their website enter if you feel like it and give their photos a like because there's they're some pretty dope content on there and i'll be seeing you very very soon guys cheers and bye bye